Hey everyone, from all of us here at the Ridge, Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! We're so excited that you chose to be, spend part of your Easter with us. Easter Jam is an experience that's big enough for the whole family. We're going to play some games, watch an awesome story, give you a couple of questions to talk about, and wrap up with a song that's perfect for Easter. And on Monday, we're kicking off something for kids and students called Double Dog Dareathon. There's gonna be dares and challenges and prizes. So be sure to head to our website at theridgecc.com backslash dareathon to get all the details. But right for, for right now, we're gonna hand you over to our friend Trey, who's gonna get you started with Easter Jam. And if you have as much fun with it as we know you will, when you're done, share this video to with other families so they can have fun too. Have a great Easter, guys. Hello everyone, and happy Easter. I'm Trey, and I am so pumped for what's about to happen. Now before we get started, there's only one thing you need to know. Easter Jam is for everybody in your family. So if you're a teenager, this is for you. College students, you too. And if you're a younger kid, get ready. We're about to have some serious fun, and we need you to lead the way. Adults, buckle up. This is Easter like you've never done it before. No matter who you are, we want you to know that Easter Jam is for you. The only way to not have fun is to not participate. So look around. Is anybody missing? If so, hit that pause button and go get them now. We're getting started in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, hear me out. There are only two kinds of people in the world. People who love these things and people like me. I just don't get it. How do you eat something that is this cute and grainy? Now let's see how your family feels. Show me a thumbs up if you love to eat these things and a thumbs down if you don't. Okay, okay. There are a lot of different opinions out there, but no matter how you feel about eating peeps, you're gonna love this game. Your family is going to face off in the greatest peeps jousting competition of all time. I'm gonna explain how it works and then I'll tell you when to start. First, divide the room into two teams. Next, take two peeps and assign them to a team. Now, if you don't have any peeps, no worries at all. Big marshmallows like this one will work just as well. Now, team A gets peep A, team B gets peep B. You can come up with cooler names like Lord Sugarcoat or Sir Sprinkles, you get the idea. You can also use a marker or a Sharpie to decorate your peeps to give them some personality. Maybe you can draw a mustache on your peep or give them some mean eyebrows or a fancy outfit. Just let your creative juices flow. Next, you need to prepare your peeps for battle. Take a toothpick and stick it into the front of each peep, just like that. Now you can think of the toothpick as a jouster, a lightsaber, or a sword. It just depends on how serious your family is about the competition. Make sure the toothpick is facing forward and toward the other peep. Now you're gonna place the two combatants on a microwave plate. No social distancing is necessary. You want the peeps to be as close together and facing one another. And finally, time for the big event. Gather around and put the plate in the microwave, setting the timer to 45 seconds. You won't let it run that long. In fact, don't let it run that long. Then press start. Watch at a safe distance until the peeps drop their toothpick sabers and one touches the other. The toothpick that touches the other peep first, that peep wins. Now, as soon as this happens, you're gonna wanna stop the microwave. Trust me on this one. Stop the microwave. Okay, it's time to settle this thing. And don't forget to snap a pic of that photo finish. It's go time. Press pause now, and I'll wait here. How did it go? Who won? I want pictures. You can post them with the hashtag EasterJam2020. Now, 
I have to admit, this was a lot more fun than I thought. And also, this happened. Jeez. All right, you ready for another game? For this one, you need a laundry basket and socks. Lots of socks. Clean or dirty, doesn't matter. As long as they have a match. Now if you need to, go grab those things now. Press pause, I'm gonna go wash my hands, and then I'll explain the rest. Got your basket and socks? Great. Now, choose two people to play. You'll also need two people to be scorekeepers. And to get started, dump all the socks on one side of the room. Don't worry, those socks will make their way back to the basket real soon. Then, place the basket on the other side. And when I say go, players will grab a sock, go through the pile, and find the matching one. You'll roll the socks together in the shape of a ball, or like an Easter egg, and then toss them just like that, across the room, into the laundry or Easter basket. Now the player with the most socks or eggs in the basket at the end of the timer wins. If you don't have scorekeepers to help you count, you have to keep up with that number on your own. So that means everybody's on the honor system, all right? Parents, I'm looking at you. Okay, now if you need to, press pause now and get everything and everyone in position for the game. I'll wait here. Everybody ready? Great. We're putting a countdown timer on the screen right now, and this Easter egg throwdown is happening in three, two, one, go. All right, families, come back over here. Come on back. Who won? Okay, that, that was wild. And whoever won gets socks. Okay, just kidding. But adults, make sure whoever won the challenge gets a special treat today. Now, I hope you're having fun so far. We're celebrating because today is Easter. And if you don't know the whole story of Easter, that's okay. Today we'll talk about what makes today, maybe more than any other day, a happy day. But before we get there, I know you have a lot of family and friends who would love to hear from you. And to make that happen, you have a few options. Pause this video and pick one of the challenges on the screen to wish your peeps a happy Easter. <laughs> okay, so I just got like nine texts from my crew saying happy Easter. Thanks fam, real nice. Now even though we're celebrating a little differently than we have in past years, that's okay. Easter is still happy. And that's not just because of peep wars or Easter baskets or chocolate bunnies, although those things are awesome. It's still happy because of what happened thousands of years ago at the first Easter. It's the world's most powerful story and yet it's so simple. So simple that it can be told with laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds. 
and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them. But now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. I hear that story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God sent Jesus to the world to remind me that he is greater than anything that can go wrong in my world. The simple fact that Jesus came back to life is proof to me that I can face anything bad that happens. I like to think about it this way. I can because Jesus is alive. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Here's an idea. Take a few minutes and add to this list of things you can do because Jesus is alive. Answer this question as a family. How would you fill in the blank, I can because Jesus is alive? Pause the video while you discuss. And when you're finished, meet me back here. Awesome. I love conversations like these because remembering what God has done in the past helps me to trust Him with what's going on in my life right now. And I hope that's true for you too. 
And I hope you spend the rest of the day making happy memories with your family. To get you started, here's one last challenge. Now for this one, you'll need to decide who is the technology genius at your house. Maybe it's a step parent or an aunt or maybe an eighth grader. Either way, decide who that person is now. Got it? Awesome. Now as soon as this video is over, I want you to go outside and take a family Easter photo. You can be dressed up or you can be in your PJs. It can be totally normal with smiling faces or silly with one of those filters that turns your face into a bunny rabbit. No matter how you do it, take a family photo and make it awesome. Then share it to social media. Remember to use the hashtag EasterJam2020 so we can see your family's Easter style. Maybe now more than ever, this is a time to celebrate and remember God's faithfulness and the hope he gives us in Jesus. After all, that's what makes Easter so happy. Celebrate Jesus is alive 